you have to do it. Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the Correct View. Sam I. B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. For listeners who have only come for the Fukushima story, do not get bored. Skip ahead five minutes. I will have this tied up in five minutes. To all of the regular listeners of the show, do not skip ahead because I'm giving things away. It is your last day to ask for, to vote for you the stupidest story of the Dove's Cap of the Month Award. Again, if you're here for the Fukushima story, skip ahead five minutes. I'll be done with all this by then. Um, if you want to enter the contest, look up the Dove's Cap of the Month over the last year and tell me what you think the dumbest story was. We're going to be giving away passing time CDs. You're going to get the only existing autographed copies of the Krampus single. They will be numbered by hand and autographed by every member of the band, including the management team. This CD has not been anywhere except in the great digital ether of nowhere. You're going to get it autographed. You're going to get the, uh, the five songs that we were giving away last year. And you're going to get the first ever uh, Sam and Christelle autographed Bah Humbug $10 bill. Uh, it'll be a real $10 bill autographed with the Bah Humbug. Um, so what I need you to do is pick your dumbest. I mean, dumbest. What was the dumbest story that you saw me cover on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award in the last year? It's real easy. Go to my channel. Look it up. Let me know which one you pick. You'll get the uh, two CDs, the one really, really rare and then you will also get the uh, Bah Humbug $10 bill. Now, um, moving on, got three minutes till we have to get into the thick of it. I'm letting everybody join that's coming in. Um, Christelle, it is uh, the 3rd of January, and we told Christelle that we, she was late. We, I know she was. I don't know why. She it wasn't my fault. Why were you late? Um, well, see... What? Why were you late? I, I, I work for... Uh, GE, which is a sister station uh, to TEPCO. I don't know if anyone no, knows wait, that. Wait. Okay. So you yeah, and I was waiting I'm for them. I'm fixing my volume here. Go ahead. I, I was waiting for them to send me the last shipment of Christmas ornaments because uh, I, I ran out of Christmas ornaments. You ordered your Christmas ornaments from TEPCO? Yeah. I, I thought it would be a great idea. To so order your so Tepco promised you that they were going to be here without a doubt. Oh yeah, they? they said they said don't worry about it. You know we got this. Okay, well we're making Christelle do this. We're making her do it, friends. It's mandatory. She's gonna finish the tree and then we'll show it to everyone. Um, and for those of you that are wondering, maybe there's a Christmas tree up because we're redesigning the studio. But I, I'm sure that'll be a long time away. Um, in any event. I have promised to tie up all of the loose ends within the first five minutes. I have announced the contest. I have announced the giveaway. I have announced that Tepco is behind on their Christmas tree design because we are redesigning our studio in real life, but uh, we'll go with it. And I never know who's listening as part of the show, and people will really think that that's the case, but we're going to go with it. And, uh, of course, the Bah Humbug has been announced, and one more thing needs to be announced, and that is a thank you for sharing and for doing everything that you do to make sure that people see these shows. Because we laugh and we kid around. Because things, things are about to suck in a minute when we get to the regular news. That's why we do this. Um, I want to thank you for sharing it. And I want to ask you if you could be so kind as to donate to the show. You can do so at the correct views at Hotmail.com. You can donate through PayPal. And every penny that you give to me, that goes towards a better show. And I'm trying to do a lot of things this year. I have applied for a few grants. We have done a number of things to try and further this show. And in order to buy things that are better than that camera, for instance, it involves you donating and you helping. So please, at the correct views at Hotmail.com, do me a favor, donate through PayPal. And look, I finished that up with uh, like a minute to spare. Ain't that great? I mean, I yacked all that. Bam! There it goes. Switching over. All right, friends. If you did skip ahead, bah humbug to you. We are going on to the massive Fukushima update. 
I'm brought to you by D. Allen Ross, the day the lights went out. If you would like to advertise, make sure you let me know, by the way. It's, he's going to be winding down here quickly. But uh, he wasn't on all the time, and I told him he would be, and it would be kind of twisted if I lied to him. Look at this. Fukushima fuel fragments found in Europe, 10,000 kilometers from the nuclear reactor. Now, you're going to have to look this up yourself. It's on this Milky the Clown site. I have it up on screen share here. Fukushima fuel fragments found in Europe 10,000 kilometers from the nuclear reactor. You know what that means, right? It means that the nuclear fuel blew out of the reactor in what is called a melt-out. Now, when the melt-out occurred, it blew the core of the reactor, which we have never seen before, all over, I mean, we've never seen one explode, I don't mean we've never seen one, um, explode all over Europe, nice, nice butt, Christel, and it blew all over Europe, and it carried around the world to dump these poisons and toxins all throughout the northern hemisphere which will lead to untold cancers and diseases throughout basically the rest of recorded history unless something were to happen which would imply that we have reached a level of technological advancement to remove this from the environment to which we have zero knowledge at the current time. I mean, we know of zero, no way to do it at all. And so now, now you see why we kid around on the show, because the actual news itself, friends, is freaking terrible. Um, this is from the express.co.uk. They're on the show quite often. Fukushima fears a powerful earthquake hits nuclear power plant region in Japan. An earthquake in Fukushima has put the city's nuclear power plant owners on alert. Now, there's a few earthquake stories here that are coming right in a row. And that is very, very important for you to know because you're going to think, well, he's, he's lost his mind. He's repeating the same thing over and over. No. These are a series of earthquakes that have hit that area in a row. Now, this is important for two reasons. First of all, they're, start, they're talking about starting the nuclear reactors up again in some areas. Blind to the fact that not only were they created in an earthquake zone, but that they are trying to open the reactors at a time when that earthquake zone is very, very active. Second of all, making the nuclear fuel reactive. Uh, second of all, they're blind to the fact that the earthquake triggered one of the meltdowns prior to the tidal wave hitting thus proving that an earthquake and not just a tidal wave can trigger a nuclear disaster. So let's read about a few of these that we had in a row here. All of these are sourced. I'm letting you know where to find them. A magnitude 6.3 quake has hit Japan's Kanto region, according to the Japanese Meteorological Agency. The area borders the Tohoku region, where the Fukushima power plant had a devastating meltdown in 2011, after a mega earthquake caused a massive tsunami that we've recovered that ad nauseum. Japan's UK news agency said the tremors were felt throughout the wide areas of the east coast through the epicenter, though the epicenter was not at sea, meaning a tsunami is unlikely. Unlikely means it is still possible that an earthquake that's in the country can trigger a tidal wave. That's because it goes outward and then comes back and you just hope that it doesn't come back very strong. did not really realize that before I read this article, friends. Second of all, there is no mention of the fact that this could affect Sende and a lot of the other nuclear power plants that exist up and down the border that we're talking about here. The Japan News said it was powerful enough to be felt in the same region as a nuclear power plant, which is part of the Honshu Island soon to be poisoned Honshu Island at this rate. The Tokyo Electric Power Company, who promised us our Christmas ornaments, which is still decommissioning Fukushima's ruined reactors, is investigating any impact of the quake there. 
So you think, all right, that's just a freak. It's not going to hurt anything. Seaborne Fukushima radiation plume hit the West Coast. Corporate media reported that it's dangerously close. So every time one of these earthquakes hit, it creates a plume. We're going to get back to that in a second. Right after we mention the 5.6 quake that strikes off Fukushima, this is from the Japan Times, um, an earthquake with a preliminary magnitude 5.6 off the coast of Fuka Pre Fukushima Prefecture early Saturday, the meteorological agency said no tsunami warning was issued. At 5.08 a.m., the tremor, which originated at a depth of 20 kilometers, registered 4 on the Japanese earthquake intensity scale of 7 in the city of Iwaki. Usually we go to 10 here, so remember. The way they do it here is called orders of magnitude to make a really complicated theory easy. Just think of it as every from 5 to a 5.1 isn't 1% 1 worse or 10% worse. It's 10% worse. Uh, so a, a, uh, a 5 to a 6 is a 100 point jump, not a 10 point jump. And they have seven layers on there, so the numbers are more critical, although I don't know by, I don't know what their rating orders of magnitude system would be. Uh, Japan sits on the junction of four tectonic plates and experiences a number of relatively violent quakes every year. But rigid building codes and strict enforcement tend to keep the damage to a minimum. Yeah, unless the nuclear power plant is half falling down and about to poison the entire northern hemisphere, if it does so. Such as this, magnitude 5.9 earthquake strikes Japan in proximity to Fukushima. That's the other rating system, by the way. The one I just told you about. A 5.9 magnitude quake has struck northeastern Japan, 18 kilometers, and an E of Diago, and in close, I said that like an Italian city, that was great. And in close proximity to the infamous Italian Fukushima nuclear power plant, the U.S. Geological Survey reported no tsunami warning has been issued. So quake after quake after quake, just waiting there. The prefecture has a population of three million people. Three million people, friends. Um, it says the quake had a shaking intensity of 6 on Japan's scale of 7, and the shaking was felt as far as Tokyo. According to the NHK, the Tokido Shinkansen high-speed train was halted for safety checks after the quake. Now, how many of you are understanding the fact that they want to have the Olympics there? The coming Olympics. In an area that is so unsafe that you shouldn't even visit there for extended periods of time, they want to bring in the youthful and still growing children that are in the Olympics in many instances to perform. Never mind the fact that the cancer rates in the lymphatic system of the children of Japan, as well as many on the west coast of the U.S., have skyrocketed in recent years that all correspond to data starting with the reactor problems that happened in 11. They're going to do tests in TEPCO to see whether or not the radioactivity is dangerous. Now keep in mind the billions that are at stake, not to mention the prestige that the world gives upon the nation that hosts the Olympics. Do you think that there is even the slightest chance that they're going to allow this not to go forward for the sake of the people because they care about the people that much? Anyone? No, that is absolutely not going to happen. So this is something to watch, especially if you are someone that does follow the Olympics or God forbid somebody get this through a video of someone that's about to perform in the Olympics. Imagine working your whole life to, to go and perform in a place that's not only deadly now, because they found parts of the core that were wiped out in the disaster, having blown all the way to Tokyo, city as big or bigger than New York, arguably, either way. Um, but they're now just going to cover up the disaster as if nothing happened. Toxins that remain cancerous for hundreds of thousands of millions of years in some cases.
Look up the half-life of plutonium, if you will. Think about what we're bringing and who we're bringing in there and why. This is a, a disaster. They want to act like absolutely nothing happened. Friends, all of this brought to you here by Sticker Junkie. we got two more stories to get to. StickerJunkie.com. You can make your own stickers. Go there. J-U-N-K-I-E. Get your stickers made. And when you do the checkout, do yourself a favor and type in correct views or the correct views. And what you're going to find is you're going to get a savings even above and beyond what you normally get <coughs> because you're a listener of the correct views. And if you would like to sponsor the show yourself, or if you have an ad, if you'd like to advertise, if you have a favorite charity, if there's a book you would like pushed, like D. Allen Roth, we've got a couple writers on here, Mike McLaughlin, um, let me know, and we will work out a very fair deal and get you advertised on the show as well. Yes, it makes a difference. Go ahead and ask D. Lake, ask Kenny from Change Transportation, who is on the show quite frequently. Ask them whether or not it works. They get calls and business and traffic all the time from listeners of this show. Why? Because they cover things that absolutely no one else covers. we got two more of them, and this is one of them. How's the tree coming, Christelle? Oh, it's coming. Great, great. Um, MichiganRadio.org. <coughs> Three separate groups must sign off on a plan to close Palisades Nuclear Power Plant. It takes more people to close a nuclear power plant that is killing many people than it does to stop the public execution of a murderer that killed one person. It's true. You're going to need to rewind that. What did he just say? You'll get it. This month, <coughs> the state should get some more information about the expected closure of the Palisades nuclear power plant near South Haven. You know, because we want to make sure that we should save the lives of people in South Haven, Connecticut. Make sure they don't get cancer. We need a lot of people to make sure that cancer is bad. I guess we don't know. The Michigan Public Service Commission sent a letter to the Consumers Energy last month with a laundry list of questions about the planned closure. Consumers sold the plan to Entergy in 2007. Consumers were supposed to... Consumers was, that's a typo, was supposed to keep buying power from Palisades through at least 2022. Entergy has a license to operate the plant through 2031. Last month, the two companies announced a business deal that includes closing the plant in October of 2018. Why? Because, among other things, how many of you know what a routine release is? Um, if not, we've covered it a time or two here, but it's been a minute since I've gone over it. It's what Dr. Helen Caldercott, the pediatrician, said is, uh, she called it a routine cancer. Even when they're running well, there are times that they need to release pressure or for other reasons that make sense to people far smarter than me. They need to expel <coughs> some of the poison that is in the, it, that needs to be. Some of the poison that, no, no teleprompter, how's that? Some of the poison that exists inside of it, if, if it pressurizes, it'll blow the seals and actually cause a much bigger problem. So they will expel the nuclear fuel out in what is called a routine release. Uh, oftentimes that's tritium, which for many of you that don't know is all but impossible to not separate from water. That once it adheres, you can't, you can't really get it apart again. It just stays in the water supply. It tends to unadhere, I should say, in the human body. So they do this on a regular basis, which is why the cancer rates are through the roof in places that see or that are in close proximity to nuclear power plants. See this quite frequently. The, then they leak, and there's always some kind of a problem there as well. But that, this is even when they're running properly. It's important to note. These routine releases come even when they are being run properly. Uh, the state wants to know how the closure will affect electric customers and the grid's reliability. Again, how much money can we make, and how much of an input can we possibly get in this in terms of supplying energy let's not tell the people when they vote that you might have <clears throat> a little bit maybe an extra ten dollars a month on your electric bill 
yeah, you know, that's that's a lot of money at the end of the year. It's $120. If you think that that's expensive, look up the price of cancer. They don't word it that way. They just say, well, if we shut these down, we're going to have energy issues. They want to know what alternatives were considered, how it'll affect air pollution emissions, and how customers' energy plans to replace the roughly 800 megawatts Palisades generates. It's enough power for 800,000 homes. <coughs> How many of those homes will see cancer and uh, heart disease spike because they're running them? That's the question that needs to be asked. The Michigan Public Service Commission did not assign a timeline for customers to provide the information. It did, however, give the company 30 days to file an updated five-year energy forecast. The plan submitted in 2016 does not include the closure of Palisades, a MPSC spokesperson. Say spokeswoman said. Besides the MPSC, why can't I say that today? Two other groups will have to sign off before the plant can close. Entergy was about a week to officially notify the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission its plan to close. The NRC makes sure the plant is safely shut down and that the radioactivity on the site is reduced to certain levels. Yeah, that's because they have no idea exactly where to store this long term. They have literally no clue what they're going to do with this 100 years from now. The problem with moving it from one site to another, let's say you dug a great big hole in some twisted tunnel in Canton, Ohio. Um, that's, you have to move it from Connecticut to here. Hope it doesn't get in the wreck, get hit by a terrorist, face an unusual storm, have a blowout. And do you want nuclear fuel transported if they build a place to bury it? What, is it a place that's never going to see an earthquake? Is it a place that's never going to see a water fissure? That doesn't make any sense. The NRC says it generally costs between 300 to 400 million to decommission a nuclear power plant. At last check, the 2014 NGG reported the trust fund for Palisades has 384 million dollars. So they don't have the money to open it without help from the government. And now they don't have the money to close it either. I can think of nothing better to bring us into the dumb deal of the day. Uh, as we do the dumb deal of the day, you're going to want to look behind you. Because now that Christmas is over, it's happening. There you go. Christelle putting the angel on the tree. Long after the holiday has come and gone. Oh, yes, perfect for the dumdy of the day. Now, I'm not saying she was the dumdy. It wasn't my fault. It was allegedly techno, yes. Uh, Tepco, I should say. All right, there you see it, friends. We are going to get into the news here, having a little bit of fun as we uh, move ourselves into the dumdy of the day. I'm sure the people there on the uh, high def, the other camera, had a very good look. And there is the tree, friends, all done. Actually, not too bad. All Move your head. Although, uh, very, very late. It, Christelle got her pumpkin in the way. But, uh, oh, she's breaking the tree. We'll show it again. Because I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be up for a very long time. So here we go. RT, fake news, sparks nuclear threat between Pakistan and Israel. <clears throat> now... Do you understand? They blame sites like Drudge, Breitbart, Infowars, probably even me, with the tag that we are fake news. Fake. However, when someone that is really fake news posts something outrageous, there's no checks and balances here. So you think it would be very hard to start a nuclear war. You think we need some facts. You need some proof. No. All it takes is somebody with an internet account to have some kind of problem with it, and this happens. The Pakistani defense minister threatened Israel with a nuclear war on Twitter, <coughs> or announced nuclear war on Twitter, and they laugh at Trump, apparently responding to information from a site known for peddling out of this world conspiracy theories. So, the prime minister had absolutely no idea whether or not this was real news or not. No clue. I'm going to screen share here. Pakistani Prime Minister of Defense Kahawaji Mohammed Asif tweeted a thinly veiled threat 
toward <clears throat> in Israel on Friday, reminding it that the Pakistan is a nuclear power that will strike back if attacked. Asif appeared to be reacting to an article from the website AWD, which claimed that Moshe Yalon, the Israeli defense minister, threatened to use nuclear weapons on Pakistan if the country sent troops into Syria. As far as we are concerned, that is a threat. By misfortune, they arrive in Syria. We will know what to do, and we will destroy them with a nuclear attack, Yerlan said in a presumed AW, AWD ex exclusion. There are two problems with this news story. First, Yerlan left the post of Israeli Defense Minister back in May. In other words, the def current Defense Minister of Pakistan doesn't know that his counterpart in Israel in December 26th, the 26th of this year, did not know that he had left in May and thought that he had sent a threat to him from his post that he hasn't been at since May. That's what I call awareness. Second, the article goes on in RT, he never said it, according to the Defense Ministry's prompt reaction. <clears throat> AWD itself could not seem to get its story straight, referring to Yorlan as both Israeli Defense Minister and the former Israeli Defense Minister in the same article. Asif, however, apparently chose to be arguably safe rather than sorry and issued his warning to Israel regardless. We're talking about nuclear weapons and they are doing a tit-for-tat back and forth, back and forth with utter disregard for the fact that they could seriously destroy life as we know it on Earth by doing it. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is that you find some way to blame Israel for something. Even, of course, when the person that allegedly said it is retired. Friends, you're listening to The Correct News. We are jumping off here. One more look at the decor of Christelle here. Now, Christelle, this tree's going to be up to what, Valentine's Day, since we put so much work into it, I'm assuming? Oh, no, Buddy uh, just told me a moment ago, I had left the studio for because he called me, and um, he mm -hmm. has the construction crew coming tomorrow to uh, start uh, remodeling the set, so that's going to have to come down. Well, what are we taking? Buddy's coming tomorrow to redo the studio. Yes. So, the tree is coming down now? It will be down by the next show, and uh, the studio should be done. Well, you guys know Buddy. So, oh that, no. that'll, be, that'll be done if by the next show. If you don't know who Buddy Puff is, look up Correct Views, Buddy Puff. Uh, this could be an interesting, interesting set. Uh, all jokes aside, friends, I hope you did like the uh, Fukushima show. We're doing the Dunce Cap of the Month probably within a day or so. Uh, I'm currently writing for the Conservative Daily Post, so the shows might be for sporadic, but they will be continually coming until I find out what's going on. And you guys donate, and I can do more with the show. Thank you for watching, friends. Thank you for sharing. And good night. God bless. Don't forget to get your pick in for the dumbest story. Like I said, go to the Correct Views on YouTube. And look up uh, each month the Don't Count of the Month and let me know which one you think the dumbest was in this comment line or uh, any comment line on YouTube. Good night, friends. God bless.